Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So we recently finished a wedding photography project and we already blogged about it. We already shared it on our social media. And one thing that I wanted to do before totally archiving this project, and I don't know if I will ever see it again, is to choose a couple of images and walk with you through the shooting process. The process of shooting, especially analyzing the things that work out or the things that maybe are not ideal is a great way of learning and also of expanding your own style and your own vision in photography. Especially since our style is very documentary and very photojournalistic. It's all about finding moments and about dealing with life and dealing with unexpected situations that come up. So we were in the morning, you know, the, the getting ready, we see the bride and her mom and the son had just arrived to the room. Actually, I had just found that the bride had a son. I didn't even know about that. And I saw that the bride started interacting with the son, maybe like fixing his hair. The mom is telling her something. This is not a very good picture, but I saw the action and I just reacted right away. There's these elements that don't help anything on the picture. So I got a little bit closer. The bride continued to fix the hair of the little boy. I like this. I like that the mom is looking at the bride and that the bride is looking at the son. I feel like the eyes of the viewer connect a lot with the eyes of the characters or the subjects in whenever it's video, or whenever there's pictures. And in video, of course, this can be useful whenever you are making cuts. But in photography specifically, it creates dynamic images. So it allows the eye to flow from here to here to here. Also, another part that really attracts the attention is the hands. So the eyes always want to go to the action. What is the person doing? So here we have the eyes, then we have this. So this is not a bad image, but I still thought, okay, maybe I will continue shooting. Whenever I get to something that maybe works, I don't stop there. You know, I've, I, I think that the, the part of the work of the documentary photographer in weddings or in different kind of project is to not stop shooting and always look for moments. And that's when the bridesmaid walked by, started talking with the mom, and it created these different uh, connections that I really, really liked. For me, this is the picture that stood out the most from all of those. And actually, the moment didn't stop. Let me show you here. The moment continued, like the bride still looked at the little boy. As you can see, I was still trying to figure out a different composition. And this is another moment that I also really like. Again, because the eyes, you know, the little boy is looking outside the frame. The mom is looking at the bridesmaid. The bride is looking at the bridesmaid. The bridesmaid is looking at the bride. You see all of these invisible lines. But in the end, I still figure out that this one. And that, that's also another thing. A good image for me is not only one that is good in composition or good in moment because you know, even when there's no moment, you can still make an image stand out by composition itself. But the element that brings the image to another level is emotion. So for me, this image is just, it just shows a little bit of the love of the mom to her son. Maybe this image is stronger in composition. I don't like the space here. I wish I was a step backwards so that I could have a little bit more breathing space. But still, even though this is a moment that I really like and the composition and the separation between the subjects and the layers, I also really like. But this one is just stronger because of the emotion, in my personal opinion. And in black and white, I got rid of the color, which was a little bit of a distraction. As you can see, the colors are not I, here I'm using the Fujifilm classic negative simulation. I'm using that whenever I'm shooting. Well, we were using it. Now I'm using classic Chrome. 
and the colors are not super saturated, they are not distracting. In a way, it's almost like if it was not, if color was not necessary here. So in the end, I just decided to put it black and white because of that. So it, it's just about trying to eliminate distractions and allowing the viewer to really focus on the content that the image is giving. And by content, I don't not only talk about light moment composition, but also the emotional content and this thing that the image is saying indirectly. Let's go to the next image. So this is the image. The way that I arrived to this image is because the ceremony in downtown, and this is Playa del Carmen, is one area where, where there's a lot of tourists walking around. And there's this little chapel in one corner, but still there's like taxis and there's like people walking. And so the ceremony finished and everybody has to go back to the hotel. And I see that the bride is standing with her mom uh, next to, I don't know, to these street vendors or to this little store where they sell some ice cream in the middle of the street, you know. And first I try to get close, see what I can get, because sometimes good pictures are, appear whenever you are close. You know, the, the, if there's this saying that if your picture is not good enough, it's because you're not close enough. But still, I think that in some cases you just have to try everything. So I saw this. Then I started to notice that there was so much noise around me, so many people, and then I just stepped back a little bit. And I start to get more of this life from the street appearing in my pictures. I feel like these guys in the background even notice me. This little boy already noticed me. I don't like too much whenever there's eyes looking at the camera because it kind of, uh, it's a little bit of a distraction, I feel. But in general, I started to like the scene the more that I was stepping back. So I stepped back a little bit more. These people walked by. As you can see, I'm also trying to look for moments of separation. The bridesmaid and then this guy in the background, the bride here, their mom, these guys. This moment is kind of messed it up because there's not enough separation and it just bothers the, the feeling, you know, it's not so comfortable to look at. So I just stepped a little bit more back, backwards. Finally, I start to see people walking by. The bride still stands out because of her dress. And I see this bicycle of another vendor and I try to put it in front of my camera just to create some depth. That's something that I'm always trying to look for, you know, how can I create the feeling of the, maybe of a 3D feeling a little bit more deep because the picture by itself is just 2D, you know, it's just two dimensions. But when I start to putting layers, and in this case, the layer came from the bicycle and also the people and then in the back, the bride. Then I, I saw more tourists. I also like this picture. I kind of wish I could see the face of the bride a little bit better. But I like the contrast between the dress of the bride and this tourist in swimming suit. It's just two things that you don't normally see in the same place or in the same picture. So when you have like this kind of contrast between different elements, I think it creates some dynamic tension that can bring the image to, you know, to a new level. I'll really, really make it stand out a little bit more. Like I'm telling you, the moment could have been better, especially with the expression of the bride, maybe looking a little bit more. Uh, it bothered me a little bit that I can only see one of her eyes and I cannot see the other one. The same with the mom. And I just kept shooting and suddenly I saw another bicycle coming by and I got ready and I snapped the picture. And for me, this was the winner. We have, because we have a repeating element here, which is the bicycle and the one that I was behind of. This is totally not planned. You know, I was just there and I saw the bicycle and the next second I just shot. It's just about seeing and reacting. I think the moment of the bride is much better now. Uh, you know, there's a difference between the expression of the bride now. She's 
happy. I, I don't even know to who is she talking or why is she what is she looking at. Well, we can see that the bride and the bridesmaids are looking again outside the frame. So there's more outside the frame. But the real connection here appears between the two bicycles. After a little bit of editing, I was able to make the colors a little bit more uh, warmer. Again, it's just classic negative with Fujifilm. Now I wanted to show you, like after I shot that picture, another moment happened. Like the, <laughs> this little bird. I also really like things like this. I, for me, an even more perfect picture would have been if we had the bicycles and also this bird there. Uh, it's still a little bit of a funny picture, but the bird would have, if the bird would have been here, it would have been even better. And finally, I found this picture from the reception that surprisingly, uh, we didn't get it. I mean, we didn't get anything else other than this. This is one of those pictures that was more of a reaction to the moment than something that we saw, you know, Sometimes you see the situation developing little by little, like that situation with the bicycle or that situation with a little boy in the morning getting ready. But this one, it was just the bride and the groom cut the cake. And right after the cake, it was the dancing was going to start. So the bride kind of like fixed her shoe a little bit and it creates a bit of a humor. It just creates this feeling of, oh, I didn't see that. Or it's so funny, or it's so weird, so strange. And I really like that. I mean, these moments are everywhere around us, not only on weddings, you know, they are on our everyday. And I really like when we started to capture some of that in weddings or in our photography. It just shows the foot of the bride and the cake. And then we also see the little hotel band in the bride's arm. And the groom just there, like giving some support to the bride. Uh, and the, and the flash, of course, the, the feeling of the straight flash, not soft. It just captures the atmosphere, the feeling of not planned, you know, the feeling of spontaneity that was exactly this moment, you know, right after the cake, they just cut it, they just kissed, you know, that's a very common picture. But after, the normal things or after the, you know, it's the thing is never to stop shooting, always to be ready to see and to react. There is a photographer that I really, really like. His name is Daniel Arnold. And I feel like he has influenced a lot, a lot, a lot about the way that I shoot or the, the way that I, yeah, the way that I'm reacting to moments and even accepting imperfections and not the perfect composition and all that. And his way of shooting, as he explains it, is very much shooting from the gut. You just feel something, you just shoot. Feel, shoot, feel, shoot. Don't think too much. You think one second, the moment is gone. And I feel like this kind of shooting, this style of reacting to life around you, has brought, I mean, in my in my case, it has brought me a lot of freedom because I always, I mean, I like also good composition. I also like the, the moment to happen and everything to be in the right place. But whenever you accept that, you know what, sometimes the composition will be a little bit off. But if I catch the moment and I can catch that spontaneity and that thing that was not planned, and it, it's just great. It's just something that you just saw and you capture and nobody else was able to do it the way that you did it in that second, only because you already had your finger right on top of the shutter. 